Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so more Concha Toro from Kate over at Creative Palette for me. Thank you very much again, Kate, uh, for sending this to me. Um, so I've got two different wines here um, from the Marques, the Marques de Casa Concha, uh, um, part of the winery, uh, or I guess division or whatever the winery. Um, I'll kind of go through the um, history real quick of, or the background for this particular wine. Um, so concha is seashell in Spanish, if you didn't know that. Conch, okay. Um, so uh, the Marquis or Marquez, Marquez de Casa Concha name reflects the title of nobility bestowed in 1718 by King Felipe V of Spain on the Concha y Toro family, um, which later moved to Chile under Don Melchor. Um, who founded the winery in 1883, um, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so I, I don't want me to, it's not blah, blah, blah. There actually wasn't left anything left other than just more stuff for people like me. Uh, na it's nationally distributed. You should be able to find it everywhere. So actually you probably should know that. All right. So, uh, this is the 2015, uh, Chardonnay. This is a 100% Chardonnay. Um, it's retail, suggested retail price is $22. Um, it is from the uh, Lima, uh, I'm sorry, not Lima, that's Peru, Limare area of Chile, which is uh, in the northern part of Chile. Um, it's from the uh, Quebrada Seca Vineyard. And uh, now that I've changed the gas capsule, I have had it where I put a new capsule in and that little thing happens, so... I might need to get a new one of these. I'm not really sure. Just a touch more. All right. Uh, they say that the uh, Lamari area has an exceptionally long growing season. It says it's almost seven months from bud break to harvest. Uh, they say it's one of the longest, uh, one of the longest, um, I guess, growing seasons of any wine region on the planet. Um, Let's see here. Oh, let's see if there's anything else. They also say, uh, as of California, well, is it relatively cool area? Its annual temperature is 59.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it says, as with California, cool breezes, thanks to the Humboldt current. That's a, going down the Pacific there. Um, travel inland through valleys and gaps in the mountains. Uh, then there is the mineral-rich soil, mostly limestone topped with alluvial clay. They also say uh, sunlight is the final factor. There's a lot of it thanks to the near constant clear blue skies. You know the song, Mr. Blue Sky Yellow? Awesome song. Anyway, uh, I listened to it like a bunch the other day. Because you just can't not be happy listening to that song. All right, so let's get into this wine. A uh, nice little color here. Definitely call it a modern intensity. I, mean, I can I already can smell. Wow. It's pretty aromatic uh, from just doing that. It has that like, um, I haven't even put my nose into it. It's that, that like, um, uh, uh, you know what? It's almost like, it's almost like uh, sticking your nose into like the tang, you know, a, a tang, uh, uh, um, you know, jar. Anyway, um, yeah, dude, it's, it's. Not quite orange, but there is that, that sensation of, of uh, oh no, you know what? It's actually more like Lipton iced tea, the, 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 the powdered, it's more like that, Lipton iced tea, and all, all, the, all the aromas you get with that, with the citrus and the tea and the sugar, it was, it was kind of like that, and that was just swirling the glass like from that far away. 
But there is a, a, a kind of a, um, I want to call it deep, but you know, there's, it's really kind of hard to see with how the lighting is. When I put my hand under that, I can really see the yellow. Um, but uh, you know, a good, a good yellow color, it's almost like a, um, I want to say copper, but there's, it also could be all the red around here, but there was like a, uh, it's somewhat close to this color uh, on the edge of, of all that, but some of that could be just the color picking up from the environment. Um, anyway, so I didn't get the Lipton iced tea smell when I stuck my nose in there. Um, definitely, uh, definitely great intensity on the nose. Um, you know, lots of, honestly, lots of cantaloupe and cantaloupe rind. And, um, I would say yellow apple, some peach and all, all this is ripe, very ripe on the fruit. You know, really as far as like, do I get like that loads of lemon, lime, citrus? No, I don't. Maybe a little orange blossom. Some white flowers. I don't know um, as far as documentation, what type of oak treatment this wine or the cab, like, yeah, the cab has. Um, based upon the nose, um, this probably does see oak. Um, there is a bit of spice to it. A little potpourri, potpourri-ish. Uh, uh, quality to it so yeah nice little wine there i should have started that a long time but that's okay the little this thing actually tells me how long ago i don't even need that i don't know why i set it up let's taste it hmm The palate and the nose are basically the same. Um, you've got the apples, you've got maybe a little bit of pear, a touch of peach, the cantaloupe, the tropical fruit, uh, the white flowers. Um, it is a dry wine, but there's an apparent sweetness to it because the fruit is ripe. Um, so you can really taste the fruit on it. Um, you know, it's a balanced wine. Um, the acidity is, is up there. We're calling medium plus on the acidity, which makes sense. It is a cool climate area. Um, I wouldn't call it ripping acidity like, say, a Chablis, but there is a, there is a richness to it. Um, so I would, uh, I don't really, it's not that I get like, uh, necessarily the aromas of mallow. Um, but I mean, other than, I don't know, I mean, there, there's a creaminess to it, a richness to it because you still get, you still get some of the apple and all that. So. I don't think it was, I don't think it's hundred percent malolactic has gone through it, but I think there's been at least, at least some of it. Even though it's a cool climate, it kind of tastes a little bit like a warmer climate, uh, burgundy uh, or warmer vintage burgundy. Um, be more, be more correct on that. Um, it's a very nice wine. Uh, it's very balanced. Um, I can see definitely people, a lot of people liking this wine. You know, Chardonnay is a hit and miss for me. I like the wine. I will definitely drink this. Um, I would probably like to have some food with it um, or it needs to be like super hot, which uh, with these lights over here, it is, I mean, I'm kind of, I mean, my back's getting a little warm. Um, but you know, like a super hot day, uh, I can see this being kind of refreshing. Um, maybe something that wasn't as rich I would probably go with that, but I mean, for twenty-two dollars, it's it's a good wine. Um, definitely going to please a lot of people uh, out there if you're going to buy this. A touch of that popcorn uh, smell. But not buttered popcorn, like just that freshly popped 
popcorn, uh, but it's like barely there. Um, it's good wine. Uh, if you see it out there and you like Chardonnay, especially Chilean Chardonnay, you should try it. Let's move on. Wine number two. All right. Pop this puppy in here. Now, this is the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. This is the 2015 Cabernet Sauvignon. It retails, uh, suggested retail price is $25. And um, they say it's a blend of two vineyards, one of which is uh, the same vineyard uh, that the Don Melchor comes from, which is the uh, Puente Alto. And the other vineyard is the Pirque, uh, both in the uh, Maipo region. Whew. I was going to burp there for a second. I, you know, I tend to do that. I try to hide as much as I can on the show, but I know you guys hear it. Um, let's see, uh, in the Maipo region. Let's see here. And really the rest of it is just kind of talking about the winery. But you know what? Let's, let's read it. Um, so, yes, uh, Puente Alto on the outskirts of Santiago is best known as the home of Don Melchor Cabernet Sauvignon, Chile's first ultra premium red, and it definitely is, uh, as well as Alma Viva, an internationally feted Bordeaux style blend resulting in a partnership from Conchia Toro with uh, Baron Philippe de Rothschild. Um, Pirque forms part of the original Concha y Toro estate, adjoining the historic, historic homestead of Concha y Toro's 19th century founder and namesake, Don Melchor. All right. Let's check it out. Not as uh, intense and deep as the Don Melchor, but definitely a good red ruby color. Um, almost as red as this uh, tablecloth, really. I mean, it's really just like a red color. Um, kind of like a bright cherry red. Um, not a whole lot of staining on the glass, uh, so it may not go through as much extraction. Pretty intense. Um, it's a really intense nose. Um, it's, it's, got, it's got like a combination of just red fruit, um, a bit of mustiness. So, not gonna say it's corked or anything, but you know. But it definitely has a bit of um, a bit of that quality to it, like I'm in, like I'm in a cellar. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's corked, but you know, it's got it's got a little bit of that. Um, but definitely bright red fruits. I mean, as far as the mustiness, it's it's going away. So that really could have just been maybe the sulfur blowing off. Um, there's a. It's most likely the alcohol that I'm smelling, and I don't know what the alcohol is on this. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to be screaming high, but um, I don't think it's going to be twelve and a half either. 14 and a half, yeah, I mean, it's high alcohol. Um, I can kind of smell it. And I'll, I'll be honest, it has that a similar aroma to a lot of other California cabs in this price range and lower. Um, there, there seems to be this like shared aroma um, with cabs in this range. And I, it's hard for me to explain. I, I, I struggle, I like to call it candy-fied or chemical or fake or uh, candy coating. I use candy a lot because it's like, you know, candy coated raspberry. Uh, confectionery is another good, another good term for it. it. Isn't so negative sounding as, you know, fake or chemical. But, um, but it definitely has that smell to it uh, along with the ripe red, red fruits. Um, lots of spice to it. Uh, cinnamon more than anything else. But I do get the clove and all that. So we're, we're, you know, I'm guaranteed there's oak on it. I mean, they're, they're not going to be a stainless steel camera or something you know, from Chile. It's not going to happen. But definitely oak on there. And I'm going to say a bit of um, um, not mint. Pine. A bit of pine on there. Yeah. All right. Mm. 
definitely a dry wine. Um, the fruit is still there. Um, while it's it's ripe, there's a, a touch of tartness to it. Um, just a touch of tartness to it. Uh, almost like a sour, like, uh, I wouldn't call it a sour cherry, but like, like kind of like a sour candy um, to it. Um, again, we got the candy thing in there, the confectionery um, uh, aspect to it. Um, is it a good wine? It's good wine, but it's usually the flavor profile of something I'm not, I don't like get all excited about. I mean, like I mean, I, Don Melcher, I get it's 125 bucks. Um, and it's like right up my alley uh, with, with the cab. But I mean, it drinks like its price. I would hope that for $25 from Chile, it would maybe drink a little bit higher than domestic $25 wine. It's definitely not a bad wine. I don't want you to think it's horrible. Um, it's a well-made wine. Um, it's just that flavor profile. I do get, I do still get some of that pine and mint uh, quality to it. Uh, cedar box, um, leather. It's all in there. Maybe it's just not as integrated or balanced as I maybe would like to see it. Um, it, it feels like, a, it feels young. I mean, it is a 15. I know it's 15 South America, so it's, so maybe, you know, it just needs a little more age to it. Um, you know, definitely I'm going to lay this down a little bit uh, because I have a lot of other wines that are less expensive wines that will probably be the wines I drink faster um, just because they're not going to age as well. I'm not, I mean, we're talking six months um, before I actually maybe pop this puppy open. And this is also something where if I'm eating food with it, it probably would be better. Uh, a nice little steak and all that. You know, I like the Chardonnay way better. Um, I, just, I, I, just, I just like how its flavor profile is. But I definitely would never turn this down. Um, if, if I wanted to buy, I know, a quality producer for $25 from Chile, I would have no problem spending $25 on this. Um, but at the same time, I might be kind of wanting to look for something else. Again, not a bad wine, but I'm not like super excited about it. Um, I hate giving that, I hate giving those wishy-washy um, uh, comments about a wine, but um, if I didn't like the wine, you would know. If I, did, if I thought it was horrible or bad or poorly made wine, because um, there's sometimes, some wines I just don't like, um, which is rare, that are, that are well made. Um, it's, it's, if it's a well-made wine, I'm probably going to like it or at least be like, yeah, it's good. You know, I'll drink it. Um, if it's a bad wine, but it's well-made, I mean, it's a wine I hate and well-made. That's pretty rare. Um, bad wines. Yeah. This is not, this is not a poorly made wine. Um, just maybe not my style of, of Cabernet Sauvignon, but if you like that, everything I talked about, all the flavor profile, the flavor descriptions, the aromas that I got out of it. If you like that kind of wine and $25 is a great price for you, then buy it. All right, so let's move on uh, to the next episode. All right, <laughs> I got a lot of episodes to record. Uh, thank goodness I'm off tomorrow. Anyway, um, just want, once again, thanks for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. Hit the links over there to send me some ducats so I can buy some wine or take that trip to Burgundy that I talked about last episode. Um, click the links below for any... Um, uh, extra information about the Conciatoro uh, web, I'm sorry, not the web, the uh, winery and all that, and read about all the great stuff that they do down there. Um, and we'll see everyone again next time.